So welcome everyone. Um, today we're going to be doing a Q&A with Dr. Napoleon Katsos on studying linguistics at Trinity. Welcome. Thank you for uh, having me, giving me this opportunity to be here with you. Um, I love talking about linguistics because um, it's not a subject that many people know about and sometimes people don't even know that it's available to study uh, at university. Um, but there's a lot of people who find themselves asking why or how in relation to language, how does this work? Why is this language different from another? Or what is that word you know, in my own language in English and where did it come from? If you find yourself asking these kind of questions, then linguistics is probably the right thing for you to study. Um, linguistics is the scientific study of language and it's the study of language as a system in its own right. So it's not only about English or only about French or only mm -hmm. about Mandarin Chinese. It's about understanding the properties that human languages have. What makes a language a language? Now to do that, we study the sound of a language, the forms of the words, the meaning that languages express, uh, either in the present form or, or historically. Um, so a linguist is interested in describing how the system works, um, but we're not in the business of prescribing. So we don't tell speakers what to do. We try to understand what speakers do and give a model and a theory uh, for it. Wow. Now, linguistics is an interdisciplinary enterprise uh, and we combine ideas from the humanities, formal tools and concepts from mathematics, from computer science, uh, concepts of identity and group membership from social sciences and models of the mind and brain from the natural sciences. So mm. it's really at the intersection of all these different fields that um, linguistics in the 21st century lies. It's at the middle, at the core of sciences, social sciences and the humanities. Fantastic, thank you, yeah. And it's something that, you know, that I wish I'd known about linguistics when I, when I was applying to university because I ended up studying French and maths and, and perhaps linguistics would have been a perfect sort of com you know, a compromise of the two and also to blend, as you said, it's such a blend of so many different aspects of, um, of different subjects. Um, and I, know I was doing a bit of research before speaking to you, Professor, and I, uh, I noticed that uh, one of your research interests was experimental pragmatics. I wonder whether you could <laughs> just illuminate me perhaps on that and, uh, and, and, yes. and the viewers at home. It's a thing. I, I didn't make it up. It is a, it is a subdiscipline, <laughs> quite specialised and niche subdiscipline of linguistics. So semantics and pragmatics, just to talk about that thing first, is the study of meaning. So it's a study of how words are connected to things out there in the real world because if you think about it words are just uh, sounds that your that our ears detect and our articulatory system produces but they map onto ideas and meanings and reference in the world um, the experimental side of thing is that you can study how young children learn the meanings of words or how the meanings are processed in the mind and the brain in real time by using experimental psychology techniques so we use all these behavioral techniques that the psychologists have developed for studying human behavior, but we apply them to the study of learning and processing meaning. So we bring it into language. So that's how you have that sub-discipline called experimental pragmatics or experimental semantics and pragmatics, uh, which is something that we do uh, here in Cambridge. And, and we're able to do this kind of thing precisely because we have this interdisciplinary and wide perspective into what it means to do linguistics. So we have the expertise in the theory of what is meaning and what does a theory of meaning look like and the ability to do uh, empirical research, psycholinguistic research to understand how meaning resides in the mind and the brain of the um, speakers. Fascinating. And I, I wonder whether you could give, um, give uh, me a little bit more detail on what's it actually like to study the, the subject at Trinity? You know, what, what will students be doing on a sort of day-to-day -day basis? I think when you, when you come to Trinity, you will join um, a small but vibrant group of students. So typically every year there'll be five or six um, students at any year uh, of the curriculum. Um, you'll be in good company with fellow students studying languages or psychology or computer science or these other disciplines that speak to linguistics. Um, and you will be attending lectures. So that would be the large group teaching where there'll be a professor delivering a lecture and suggesting readings for you to do. You'll be guiding your own research and reading by following that, um, the reading tips that they give you and studying on your own. And you will be participating in what we call supervisions, that is small group tutorials where uh, you're in, in smaller groups now, groups of two or three with your supervisor, and you're discussing in depth 
those topics that have been raised uh, at the lecture. And that's the opportunity to really engage in an almost one-to-one -one fashion with a specialist and ask your questions, challenge the ideas, come up with new ideas, uh, think of what research you would like to do um, for your own project. So in year three, the thing that's really um, interesting is you can do your own project in practically any subject, any domain um, mm. of linguistics, um, as long as we can supervise it, which we should be able to, uh, to do. Um, and you, know, you can develop that and shape it on, on your own through these discussions and interactions that you have uh, with the teachers and with your fellow students. Fantastic, thank you very much. And uh, you sort of, you mentioned in year three that um, what you're going to do, I wonder whether you could just give an idea of um, when, so if, if, if there's a prospective student sitting at home in year 12, when they get to Trinity, you know, that first year, how does that first year sort of map out? What do you, do they need to have a strong basis in languages already or, or is it completely new content? So when you arrive at Trinity, uh, we, we presuppose that you don't know uh, much linguistics. We will start assuming that you have a passion for language, for understanding why language works. Um, you might have read some things of your own. You may have a, a language already in your a modern language, an additional language or a classical language or something in your, your repertoire, but we're not going to assume um, that you do that. We will start from scratch. And in that first year, we will offer you four courses that introduce you to all the foundational concepts and research tools for linguistics. Mm. So you'll do a course on the sounds uh, and forms of, um, uh, in, the, in, in, in phonetics and phonology, which is the sounds of language. You do a course on morphology and syntax, uh, semantics, which is the meaning. We'll do a course on how um, the language works in society and a course on language in the mind and brain. And these will give you all these key skills um, and knowledge that you need to build upon for year two and year three. Um, and year two and year three will be fundamentally different from year one, because in year two and year three, you will be in charge of your curriculum. You will choose which papers to take from the 15, 16 odd papers uh, that we have within the department. But also you can take, or uh, if you wish, you can take uh, a paper from modern languages if you have a specific interest in the linguistics of such and such a language. You can take a course from uh, uh, psycho um, that first year of exposure to linguistics uh, has taken you. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. And um, in order to, that, that was such a helpful um, a summary of, of, of how the course progresses. And I think if, if students are, again, you know, year 12, uh, sitting at home thinking about studying uh, linguistics, what's the best way they can prepare for studying linguistics at Cambridge? Is there, is there certain A-levels they should study? Um, what sort of things should they be doing outside of school to help towards um, starting here? I think that's such an important question, John, and thank you for, uh, for raising it. Uh, there is no linguistics A-level, and sometimes people should, oh, wait, have I missed out by not studying X or Y? You know, maybe I'm not in a good position to follow, to, to apply for linguistics. And the answer is that precisely because linguistics is such an interdisciplinary yeah. um, uh, course, and that we're at the intersection of the humanities, social science and the sciences. Uh, there is no particular unique route through which people come into linguistics. It does help if you've studied, um, if you're studying a, a modern language um, or a classical language, because that gives you some familiarity with how different languages work. Uh, it does help if you have the English language A level. Uh, and a lot of our candidates have either a modern language uh, or classical language or the uh, English language A level. But we are a very wide, uh, we have a very wide perspective. And sometimes uh, we do see uh, excellent candidates which have got uh, uh, three humanities A levels which don't have a language or three science A levels. Right. And um, what these people manage to um, uh, communicate in their application is a genuine passion for understanding how language works even if they don't have an A-level, let's say in French or whatever, have um, got them to the point to think critically about how, language, how languages work, why they differ, why they have the form that they have, and so on and so forth. So you can show that you have this, the interest and the motivation and the skills for doing linguistics, even if you haven't followed this set of um, A-levels that our, our, most of our candidates have. But I'm, I'm emphasizing that it's about you know, we have some roots that generally bring you into linguistics, but they're not exclusive yeah. in any way. 
Fantastic. And there are things you can do to sort of, you know, yeah, build yourself into that position where you would be uh, apply for linguistics. Um, your school might be participating in the UK Linguistics Olympiad. So that's an excellent kind of training you can get with solving linguistics puzzles and, you know, addressing linguistics challenges about how languages work. So one route is the Linguistics Olympiad. Uh, another route that we offer here in, in, in Trinity and is quite popular, um, you can take part in our uh, linguistics essay competition. Yeah. So every February we will um, announce a topic. It could be about the benefits of language learning. It could be about whether languages change for, uh, for, 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 the, uh, for, for the best or for the worse. Uh, it could be about um, the history um, of English, about multilingualism. Uh, and the deadline will be in early August. Uh, it's open for um, year 12 students and you submit an essay. Um, we, you know, we, we give feedback, we try to give feedback uh, to most of the essays. Um, and it's great practice, and great training because we suggest some readings. So you'll see some, uh, you know, we give you uh, things to study and, you know, you'll get that practice in, in writing an essay. So uh, you mentioned um, that it's, it takes you to unpredictable places. Um, I, I suppose that's that's really interesting, uh, a really, really interesting notion. And, and um, what, maybe what I wondered was if, if if I could not to put you on the spot too much, but perhaps could you give some examples of where graduates have gone on to and what they've gone on to do? Because if they must go somewhere, and you said it was unpredictable, so uh, so could, perhaps you could give some examples for it. No, it's 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 true. I mean, some of our the, the more striking cases, I would say, include people working for the MI5 and the MI6. Right. People going into foreign office careers in the diplomatic service. Yeah. People doing forensic phonetics. So being wow. you know, try, in forensic linguistics, trying to identify um, a, a speaker from the sounds, from mm. the voice, or even from the text. You know, you see two pieces, two texts written, and you can try to work out whether it's by the same author uh, wow. or not. Um, but you know, these are the more striking cases, including yeah. you know, with journalism, etc. Um, I would say many of our graduates uh, um, uh, go to, to any kind of job that requires critical analysis, uh, the ability to think, you know, in an abstract way, to be critical about your hypothesis and the conclusions that you reach, uh, and to work with data, qualitative data and quantitative data. So our destinations include uh, business, information technology, data science, finance, the civil service, teaching, um, public service, and of course, you know, further research into um, the linguistics at postgraduate level um, for, for some people. Speech and language therapists, um, language technologies, as I said, you know, quite often they have a linguistics uh, background. Yeah, all sorts of, uh, and you know, that makes perfect sense because you get, you gain such a broad range of skills from doing the degree that, it, and of course it allows you to, to have such a huge um, variety of options uh, when you finish. I, I would say that linguists are among the most highly employable graduates of the humanities. And then on top of that, Cambridge linguists and Trinity linguists, I would say, are very well placed <laughs> Indeed, uh, yeah. in, the, in the job market. I couldn't agree more. And um, just, just finally, Professor, if, if you could give one top tip to, to, us, to, these, to this year 12 student sitting at home, you know, thinking, what, what could I do? What's, what's the best tip you could give a student um, to, to go on and study linguistics at Cambridge? First of all, I would say, don't be afraid to consider it as a possibility. Right? The mm. fact that it's not so familiar, the yeah. fact that you haven't got an A-level there should not deter you from uh, really considering, you know, is this for me? And I would say, if you've really found yourself asking those questions about what, why, why is a language like that? Why is that other language different? Why is English in this way? And, you know, what is that word? Uh, you know, where did, has it come from? If you found yourself asking these questions, do consider studying linguistics. That's the first thing uh, I would say. And if you consider studying linguistics, then Cambridge, more generally, and Trinity College specifically, are, are outstanding places to do so. Um, Trinity has a long tradition in the humanities and in linguistics. I mean, some of the founding fathers of linguistic theory have studied um, at Trinity, Wittgenstein, Bernard Russell. I'm neither Wittgenstein nor Bernard Russell, but I'm just saying we have such a tradition of welcoming language and linguistics research um, in this college. And um, uh, don't be sort of concerned about the fact that you might not have heard about linguistics before, you might know, know, not know much about it. Um, 
you know, I hope with this video, we've given you the confidence to say, yes, I'd like to explore linguistics as an option, you know, if you feel that it, it fits your profile. Um, and then if you do that, really do consider applying to Cambridge um, and Trinity. Brilliant. I think you're being too modest about your own uh, your own achievements there, there uh, Professor. But um, you know, <laughs> I wish I, I wish I had spoken. You know, I wish I'd seen this video before I applied because I may well have chosen to study linguistics myself. So thank you so much for your time, and um, I really hope this inspires some some budding linguists uh, out there. Thank you. That'd be awesome. Thank you, John.